What's up, Internet? This episode is all about spoilers. My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. We get nerdy nightly. And we thought we'd share it with you. This episode has a bop. Like a real bop. Mm -hmm. That is right. Welcome back to the episode 7 Spoiler chat for spoiler. WandaVision. <laughs> it was Agatha all along. Whoa, 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 you jumped into the spoilers <laughs> real quick. We let the people know. I guess the video is called the spoiler chat. Like, you it have was, to know. Yeah, yeah. It was Agatha all along. Dope song. But we're not going to start at the end. We're going to start at the beginning. Let's just mm -hmm. jump into it. Uh, this episode opens with us driving up to the military caravan mm -hmm. for the U.S. Army that is also sword. Because they have a sword vehicle, right? But they are the U.S. Army. Yeah? So, here, here's what happens. The end of last episode, we're driving off with um, Wu sunset. and Rambo, thinking we're going to go meet whoever this aerospace engineer is. Uh -huh. And then we pull up on this caravan of U.S. Army people who have sword technology, even though Haywood is the director of sword. This is very confusing. But then yeah. they're like, no, we are loyal, loyal to, to other you. people. Which I think means Nick Fury. Oh. She doesn't say we're loyal to you. Or she's like, we have other allegiances, which I think means Nick Fury is on the side of this, right? Because the last time we saw Nick Fury was in the post credit sequence for Captain Marvel, where he was in space on a sword installation. Mm, that's true. That's true. So I thought it was like, I thought she was like... So also spoilers for Captain Marvel, but if you're here... I thought she spoilers. was loyal. I thought they were loyal to her mom... And then she was like, yeah, thank you for your loyalty to my mother. And she said, she's not the only one we're loyal to. I thought they meant her. I, I thought so but. too. But then I was like, who would have the power to supersede Haywood though? Mm. Like, I feel like Rambo might have called up Fury. Maybe. Or whoever this aerospace engineer is. Who is, like, we? so we meet Major Goodner. Yeah. Who feels, who I was like, okay. And then the car, or the, the, the truck thing pulls out. The space truck. The, I was like. Armored vehicle. Yeah. Our, our, our most armored space vehicle. Yeah. I was like, why do you have an armored space vehicle? Um, like, what planet is that for? Yeah, I um, couldn't tell you. It, so that pulls out, and I was like, oh, Reed Richards is going to pop out of that. Oh, someone's going to... Because I was like, Major Goodner can't be the big reveal. Because no. that doesn't mean... that We've been told. Like, you can't build up that it's going to be this person that's going to shock us all and then it's like some random person not from the comics that's yeah. not a spoil that's not like a cameo no no even though major Gunner, like i'm not nothing against the actress nothing against anything it's no. just that's that's no we've been led to believe that there is a big cameo mm -hmm. coming up the actress who plays so... monica rambo has said publicly that she can't wait for us to meet the aerospace engineer that's been yeah. in interviews all week is like i can't wait for you to meet the person that person is not in the episode no not in the episode so they either didn't make the cut, or we find out no, next week. No, they definitely made the cut. We're, I don't think we're going to find out next week. I think we're, no. it's going to be at the end of episode nine. Ugh, the Rise yeah. of Skywalker. Um, <laughs> so then Monica gets in the truck, drives the, the, the impenetrable truck that she's like, this is going to be able to get through. It can't even begin to get through. Yeah. And the show does not establish why they think that the hardness of the truck would change its ability to get through a magic barrier. Yeah, I don't really understand what the logic was behind all this, but you know, like, A for effort, they went balls to the wall. The whole opening sequence, I'm not gonna, the whole opening sequence was a bit of a question mark for me, because I was like, alright, so the truck is really hard and can withstand space. That barrier is magic. Yeah. Like, that, that barrier is... Fair, the opening sequence on the outside of the hex. There was obviously stuff going on inside where the Oh, right, right. We started, we, started with, we started with Wanda. Right, yeah. Right, 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 right. Um, um, and she doesn't have control of her powers fully at the moment. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Which makes sense by the end of the episode. We'll get there. Um, so Monica drives the truck into the barrier. It doesn't work. She gets out of the truck, and she's like, you know what? That truck couldn't get through, but I can. I can? And then Somehow? just starts running at it. And you're yeah. like, girl, why? <laughs> yeah. Also, how did they know that the barrier was any different than what it was before? Other than, like, it changed color. They don't. Yeah. That's that's the confusing... Like, the, the so, whole opening sequence was, like, 
Monica wants to get in there so bad. I'm assuming the truck was meant to honor <coughs> her from her DNA being messed with. Yeah, it was supposed to block the radiation. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the problem is, as, as we established at the end of last episode, the radiation is changing Monica every time she goes through. Um, because, spoiler alert, she's a superhero in the comics. What? What? Monica Rambeau is Captain Marvel. Obviously, in this she won't be, because uh, Brie Larson's probably not going anywhere. But she is going to be Photon, probably. Uh, which is another superhero name she has in the comics. Cool. Um, and so when you see her go through the barrier, her eyes go blue. She starts to see things a little differently. Uh, and <laughs> Very cool. She, that whole sequence. Yeah. It was beautifully shot. Uh, she clearly has superpowers. Yes. Yes. Very um, clearly. So Photon has been born. Uh, I love that WandaVision is kind of like a secret origin story for Photon. Mm-hmm. In you know, Wanda kind of has broken bad a little bit. Wanda acknowledges in this episode, she's like, uh, maybe I'm the bad guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Monica pushes through and becomes a superhero. She makes a really bad decision to do it. Like, running at the barrier was dumb, right? Yeah, like, she definitely could have, like, died or become, like, a mutant zombie. Yeah. And there was no reason to... The, the, she had no reason to believe it was going to work. No, no. Like, no but one she has... was like, I can do this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was like, wait, what? Are you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> like... Um, I, I love... Uh, then we get our only sight of Haywood in the episode, who is clearly, like, one of the bad guys of the series because he wants yeah. to weaponize Vision. Yeah. Um, and they were like, we want to remind you that he's in the show, but he won't be in the rest of the episode. So he's going to stand there and be like, I don't feel very lucky right now. Yeah, and that's, yeah, we didn't get much. And then he cut his check, and he went uh, out and bought a new Lamborghini. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and then we cut to inside, and uh, the least important part of the whole episode happened, but my favorite part of the whole episode happened, uh, which was Vision uh, meets up with uh, Kat Denning's Darcy character inside. Mm-hmm. She is now the escape artist of the circus. Solid choice. Solid choice. <laughs> um, I loved it. And he's like, no, 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 you're from the outside. You know things. And she's like, she's like I don't know things. I don't know what you're talking and about. I'm and I'm sitting in bed going, touch her, just, just, you know, Vision, you know, all you have to do is touch her temples. You yeah. know, you've done it so many times. It took him a second, but and then he got did there. That. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, then she knocks out that very, very muscular man. <laughs> Which was great. Yeah, that was very impressive. Kat Dennings, you are my hero. Um, um, we love you. They steal the popcorn truck. Yeah, some and, kind of food truck, whatever it was. And then what I found really interesting about the next sequence was Vision learning the truth about his past. And um, I feel like Vision, up until this point in the series, has been very critical of Wanda because he doesn't have all the information. Yeah. And upon hearing the truth from um, Kat Dennings, which was still delivered to him in a comedic way for us, the audience, yeah. but in a very emotional way for him, yeah. um, I was really touched by um, the, the empathy that he found for her upon learning the truth. Yeah, well, and and that's, like, if it's not, if it's not something you've experienced and nobody has ever experienced that mm-hmm. because <laughs> we're not superheroes, um, but, you know, if that's not something that you've gone through, it's very difficult to relate to and I think like the one amazing thing about Vision is his humanity in ways Mm -hmm. yeah when he's not a human like it's just it's very interesting and well played yeah I I really love the line that like oh so my my consciousness started out as an AI named Jarvis and then my body was built for um Ultron's genocide yeah and I died to save the universe yeah and he's like did it work and Kat Denning's like, ah. For like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Kat, Denning, Kat Dennings has seen Infinity War and Endgame, right? Like, Kat, Darcy, Darcy in universe has watched the movies of the Avengers. Because she knows literally everything that happened in those two films. Yeah. She's like, yeah, no, so, uh, yeah, so, I don't, I, like, I don't, did Scar, did, is it public knowledge that Scarlet Witch killed Vision and then Thanos rewound time. Like, why does she know that? She's a smart lady. Kat, like Darcy has all. Maybe maybe the reveal is that Darcy is the Watcher, and we're gonna find out that like Darcy. But like in every episode, Darcy is has she too much. Knowledge. Always has the right information for the moments, and it's information that like we the audience know, but like sometimes because doesn't we've seen always the make... movies. Yeah, yeah. But doesn't always make sense for the characters in the series to know. It's but here's the thing: it's not like there was like a tiny little CCTV camera in the woods outside of Wakanda 
where all this went down, right? And there's like four Maybe people. Maybe there was. But there's four people on Earth yeah. who know what happened in those woods. It's Thanos, uh, Captain America, um, who else is there? Scarlet Witch, and that that's kind of it, right? Like, who else was there when that happened? I guess Vision was there. Vision is dead. No, I mean like no in the inter he... in the in the interim period. Oh. Who could have revealed what happened in those moments to the world? Like who? Maybe we'll the only options crazy security cameras. The only options are Captain America or Scarlet Witch revealed to everyone that and it wouldn't have she been... killed Vision and then Thanos rewound time. Like why would they tell people that publicly? Why yeah. would that be knowledge that people have? Mm -hmm. Why would you tell anyone the events of that? Right. Yeah. Um. But Darcy like, very knows clearly everything. knows that. Yeah, she is like the all no like omnipotent. But also Wu knows that because in like <laughs> I, it was either last episode or two weeks ago, Wu was like, wait, but he, one of them they were talking about it and they were like, well, no, Vision's dead, dead, not snap dead, right? Yeah. So it's just it, like the, I, I do have questions, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, uh, I'm of course referring to Kevin Feige, uh, one of my closest friends. Um, uh, Kevin, uh, yeah. he doesn't answer my text anymore, but, um, Kevin, I have so many questions. Why, why is this stuff public knowledge? Unless, there, like, were there, like, court depositions at, like, did the Avengers have to, like, answer to, like, a global tribunal, maybe? And, like, maybe. then things got out that way? But even that, I don't feel like people, I don't think that global tribunal would want the public to know that the Infinity Stones snapped half of the people out of the... Yeah. Questions. There's many I do of have them. questions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I, we don't have the answers to those. We don't. Unfortunately. We don't. Um, I, 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 I do love the, <laughs> the, the vibe of, thanks, this, mm -hmm. this whole episode with the, um, it's called Breaking the Fourth Wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have that moment, you know, in those 2010s, is that what you call it? Yeah. The, the, the 2010s. Well, the late 2000s, early 2010s. Yeah. The, or the late aughts is what they call where, the, the zeros. Yeah, where they have a character, they take them aside. It's like, they do that in The Office, right? The Office, they, Parks like... and Rec, um, Modern Family. Uh, this this episode, uh, I think that a lot of people say The Office, that's the mo most popular show. Yeah. But this, this, this episode, especially the Wanda stuff, really, really is very Modern Family. Okay. Um, and really leans into the style of Modern Family uh, and... Um, it does that very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I felt like the asides with Wanda were very interesting because they were like punchline jokes. Yeah. But there was so much pain on her face that yeah. they weren't funny. Yeah. She played them devastatingly. It was, like I was like, oh God. Yeah. It was like, what if a sitcom made you uncomfortable? Yeah. And in, in, the, most, in, the, in the most excellent way that led up to the final reveal that we'll get to in a second. Mm -hmm. I also felt like the vision ones outside of the parked truck in a parking lot were so weird and funny. And then he's like, wait, why am I sitting here? <laughs> and he stands up and hits the boom mic. Like, I was like, this is, this is such a weird joke, but it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Um, then, uh, back at home with well, Wanda. And especially cause we found out Wanda's not broadcasting it, any, and it anymore. That is true. Yeah. That is true. So it's just for the people who are there and us, I guess, but yeah. She's who is, but who is broadcasting the, the signal? Well, actually, why is we there don't know. Why is I, this show needs Wanda. to explain why this was all a sitcom all along? Like, I need. Is it just because? Spoiler it's fun. alert! Agatha Harkness is just that messed up. Probably. Because here's the thing: I asked in the first spoiler chat, episode one, two spoiler chat. I was like, "Why American sitcoms?" Yeah. Wanda, Wanda does not grow up with American sitcoms. She grows up in Sokovia. Yeah. There's no, like, she can't have, like, a personal connection to American sitcom. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so all the way back in our spoiler chat, episode one, two, I was like, I feel like the sitcom is the tease of who the other person is. Because yeah. we knew that uh, well, Scott Witch is not going to be the villain at the end of the series. They're going to redeem her. She's going to be a superhero. She's going to be in um, Avengers. You know what I mean? Like, they're not, like, making her the big villain of Marvel, right? Yeah. Um, Elizabeth Olsen is too talented. You don't mess with that, right? No, yeah. Um, yeah. And so you have to ask, like, who, who is the villain is related to why it's sitcoms? It has to be. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think it's really interesting that the broadcasting of the, the, the what this inner sitcom of the show mm -hmm. stopped happening when Wanda took control of the barrier and expanded it. Because yeah. I don't think Wanda was in control of the barrier before. 
Because if you go back and you watch... Okay, let's just get to the end of the That's episode. That's true. Agatha Harkness is the one who's pulling all the strings. We learn yes. about that in an incredible theme song. Yes. Agatha All Along is a bop. It's yeah. so good. If you go back and watch the earlier episodes, when people cross through the barrier, it isn't red. No. It's purple. And Agatha's magic is purple. Yeah. So I think that the barrier was Agatha's. Up until the moment where Wanda, Wanda in the last episode expands it and it suddenly it turns, turns very red. red and very visible, right? Yeah. Wanda's magic isn't hidden like Agatha's is. Yeah. So Agatha's barrier was purple and see-through until you got close. Wanda's is red and like vibrant and angry because yeah. she's angry. Yeah. When we when we sh have the reveal in Agatha all along that Agatha is sitting behind the director's chair of the um, Wanda interview moments, yeah. it, it, that is the clue that the sitcom stuff is all Agatha's stuff, right? Yeah. She's directing the sitcom. Yes. My favorite, my favorite thing about that is the idea of Agatha having her own moments to herself. Because she has moments where she's yeah, on the yeah, couch. Yeah. And I just, Oh, yeah, where she's just talking to herself. Her talking to herself mm -hmm. for the sake of comedy um, is brilliant, and I love it. So Agatha is directing this, these sitcoms. Mm -hmm. Um and she's making them happen, and the song reveals, like, oh, she made, she killed the dog, she did the thing, she did the thing, right? But the the broadcast isn't getting outside of the barrier anymore, because it's not Agatha's barrier anymore. Mm. Wanda is controlling the barrier, and so the broadcast is still happening, because Agatha wants to make it happen, but um, Scarlet Witch has now, like, used some of her power to take control of the barrier. Right, yeah, so In you can't get through. In doing so, sense. she has less control of her power within the barrier, because, yeah. the, you know, She's like, overexerted at yeah. this point, because that's huge. Mm-hmm. And so I think that it's really interesting. I, that leads me to this idea that, like, we're going to find out that, like, Agatha is... A, and it's Catherine Hahn. Like, of course, Catherine, Catherine Hahn... The fact that Catherine Hahn doesn't have a 10-season sitcom all based on the fact that she's just one of the funniest humans alive is a shame. <laughs> um, but she's doing fine. I'm not really worried about her. Yeah. I mean, you know, she's Agatha Harkness in a Marvel show. I'm mostly jealous of her. Um, but I'm also happy she's Agatha Harkness because, like, perfect casting. Um, I, I think that what happens... That, that I yeah I just think that there's like a transfer of power over who has the barrier, mm -hmm. which is probably concerning to Agatha and why she's finally revealed herself, mm -hmm. um, and why she's kidnapped Scott, which is kids, which is very interesting. Yeah, were her kids meant to be the bunny and the bug? No, because the bunny was there before. Yeah, I know it was, but it just those cut. It was just very odd. I was like, wait, what is going on right mm -hmm. now? I wonder if they're gonna bring in Agatha uh, Harkness's cat. She's a black cat in the comics that she's like, mm, she's funny. like a creepy old cat lady. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I wonder, I mean, maybe if you're going to get the kids out of the way momentarily, yeah. they'll be back. Like they're not going to kill off, um, Billy and Tommy. Yeah. We need to see Wiccan go full Wiccan in the MCU. Mm. Um, but, uh, very interesting. Very, very, it's a, yeah. like, it's a, it, it's a perfect introduction for Agatha. That song is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They nailed it. Mm. It was the, like, old-timey, like, um, Sabrina, like, Adam's Family intro for her was yeah. really cool. Like, old sitcom Sabrina, not Chilling Adventures, like, old, like, the original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, like, very Adam's Family. Yeah. Um, no, the Agatha. Very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they crushed it. I yeah. cannot wait for next week. Here's the thing. This episode didn't settle anything. No. It just, this was another we episode that was like... We have more questions. We have more questions. It, it set up more. Because this was another, like, moving people into location episode. Yeah. We got Vision to the point where he's, like, headed back home with empathy for Wanda. Yeah. Um, Photon is in the thing, has her superpowers. No, uh, There's a mid credit sequence where she, like, finds the house and then Evan Peters says hi. And who is that? Is it Pietro? Does he still have superpowers? We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's meant to seem like he is created by Agatha because he's got that purpley smoke behind him. Like Here's the thing. He's definitely controlled by Agatha. But is he created? Yeah. Because nothing is he in there is created, right? None mm -hmm. of the people in Westview are cr created. They're yeah. all real people. It's all rewritten. So is he the first creation? Ugh, the show. The, it's like, it's just like mining, right? And, like, you always think you're about to hit gold, and then you hit, like, fool's gold, and you're like, D that means there must be gold underneath, right? And you just keep going, because there's just, it's like, you're just digging through these layers. The show is so brilliant. Yeah. And I just... Uh... 
I can't wait for next week. The, the one thing I will say about this episode is I wish it had more of a resolution to it. This one felt mm. very cliffhangery. Yes. Yeah, I mm -hmm. would agree with that. I need more. When, when I'm watching the show in the future and I'm binging through it, this episode will still feel very fun, mm -hmm. but it is like leading to the next thing mm -hmm. in For a sure. way that um, the first few, the first like four, five episodes of this series didn't have that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, the last two have been a little bit like, okay, we're still getting people into place. When does, when does stuff go down? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, but he, I think next week we're going to get it. I mean... We it, have to. There's two it, episodes left. Yeah. And especially with how they left off the episode, I think the next two are going to be very exciting. Yeah. we. Everyone's still going back to that Kevin Feige said that there's six hours of WandaVision. And that, and we're only at three and a half hours of WandaVision so far. So is there another two and a half hours in two episodes? Like, is the final episode of the show going to f be like a movie, a movie. length? Like Maybe. a 90 minute episode of television? It might be. Yeah. I would be down for it. I just, yeah. I'd like to know so I can plan my day. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. What was your what was your like favorite moment in the episode? It's got to be Agatha's theme song. Yeah. I, like I I the, yeah. That's S the the standout for um, sure. Second to that is the moment is Vision's like empathy moment. It's not that funny. It's 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 a quiet moment, but like Paul Bettany's face and his acting in that scene where he's just like, "Oh yeah, this is like where he just realizes." mm Mhm. That, and then flies off like that was re that was great yeah that was really great yeah 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 this show's brilliant yeah i totally get why elizabeth olsen is getting like people are talking about her for the emmys oh god. i would nominate her oh my god she's so good in this like yeah. like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she she deserves she deserves all of it truly it, mm -hmm. her performance is uh, incredible yeah i wonder i do wonder how billy and tommy are going to factor into the end of this show yeah. Because where did they come from? Yeah. I saw a headline. I didn't read the article because I've been staying away from like reading articles about this, but I, we do, I pull news from the morning show. So I like see all the headlines. Uh, and there was one talking about uh, Monica Rambo, and it quoted her as like saying like, it's an incredible and very sad ending. And so I do wonder. Oh no. Because like, I think we all are assuming Vision doesn't make it through the show. Like, I, I, uh, yeah. Wanda, in order to save the Earth, is going to have to... It's basically the plot of Wonder Woman 2, um, <laughs> or Wonder Woman 1, uh, where Wanda's going to have to give up Vision in order to, like, save the day. Mm -hmm. She's going to have to bring down the Hex, which will kill Vision, like, probably to bring down Mephisto and Agatha and yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and that's emotional, but it really raises the question of what happens to Billy and Tommy. Yeah. Because... Ha where where did they come from? Yeah, and has it really only been like five days with them? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because the hex has been up for what, like ten days or something? Like I that? have no idea. Yeah. I really don't know. Time is a little weird, so I, it's yeah. Because it's been like six decades of television. <laughs> yeah. God, this show's so good. It's so good. Like it just is mm -hmm. so solid. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh. I, I I don't want it to be over, but I need to know what happens. So please just give it to but us. But here's the thing. When it's over, we get Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I know. So it's not even like we're going to be like, oh, God, what are we going to watch next? We're going to be know. like, and next week on. I know, I know. This is this is starting, um, this, this whole television enterprise for Marvel is starting to feel like the comics where you're like, oh my God, that was a great Spider-Man comic. What am I going to read next Wednesday? Yeah. Because in comics, Wednesday's new comic book day. And like every Wednesday. And so Friday is starting to feel like Disney Plus Day. And that's what we call it on the morning show. Yeah. And it's this like weekly thing with Marvel is starting to feel like new comic book day on Fridays. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm like, what new superhero adventure do I get to go on every Friday? Yeah. Um, and it's weird that the CW shows never managed to achieve that for me. Uh, and I don't know why I never had that feeling from it. This is more exciting. Yeah. And I think it's partially... It's better. Yeah, it's, I think it's partially because it's more creatively um, driven mm -hmm. than um, the, the, you know, the CW shows, as much as I love them and I watch them, they have a sameness to each episode because, you know, I, I love Grant Gustin as The Flash. But there is an element of that character where, like, he has to grow slower than he should because um, there's a thing people talk about um, in comic books called the perpetual second act, where the introduction of the superhero is the most exciting part of the superhero, right? The first act of the story. Mm -hmm. Finding out their powers, whatever. 
once they have their powers, there's no end. There's no like finish line. There's no end goal, right? So you can't really ever have a real climax. Mm -hmm. And so superhero stories are caught in this perpetual second act of constantly fighting new villains and constantly growing a little bit, but never achieving the end of their arcs. Because if their arcs end, they have to stop writing the comic books and then what do you do? Yeah. Um, and so I feel like sometimes the CW shows have been caught in the same issue of like they're in the perpetual second act of their TV shows. Mm -hmm. And Marvel, the movies felt that way until Endgame. Yeah. And then Endgame was like, oh, that was a conclusion. That was, that was the end of something. And WandaVision feels like, oh, like, this gets to have a conclusion. And I know Wanda will be in the next thing, and, like, there will always be new things for Marvel. Yeah. But this is starting to feel like these stories are allowed to... They're, they're creatively given permission to have more arc and um, whatnot than, like, a 24-episode television on the CW is. Yeah. Um, because you just have to fill all that time. And when you don't... When these episodes are 30 minutes and they don't necessarily have to fill all that time, when they can just kind of tell the story they want to tell and not worry about, you know, oh, well, this episode, what are we going to do with Killer Frost? Um, uh, I feel like the strength of the storytelling is a little bit higher. For sure. Um, and I, you know, I wonder, like, if you took the same cast of The Flash and you put them in a 13 issue, uh, a 13 episode miniseries, um, one season, don't know if you're getting a season two. I, I think that that cast would do incredible, and I think those writers would do incredible things. It's really the hindrance of the 24-episode format that makes those things kind of feel like, all right, this week we're going to take down the Bumblebee Man, and this week we're going to take down the lady with the weird black metal glove thing that she shoots out, and this week we're going to... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's easier to do that, like, Monster of the Week format than it is to create longer, more complicated storylines. Mm -hmm. And then the more of those longer storylines you create the more you have to be careful moving forward that you don't conflict with any of those especially when you have things. six shows with 24 episodes a season that can't conflict with each other exactly yeah, yeah so it's it's tough you know uh but wandavision damn well done damn two more episodes i can't wait i like yeah. god i've been talking about how excited i am for wandavision all week and now i'm just more excited for next week yeah we're doing real. oh god Y'all, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, come back uh, next week. All of the previous five episodes of our spoiler chats for the previous six episodes of WandaVision are up in the playlist, so go check those out. We're going to have a spoiler chat up on, uh, I think it's Monday. Um, whatever day is the 23rd, uh, we're going to watch the Superman and Lois premiere. Uh, and then we will be doing our spoiler chat for that. We didn't like the first trailer. We really like the second trailer. I'm very curious to see what we think of the show. Yeah. Um, uh, so keep coming back to the channel because we're going to keep making content for you because mm -hmm. that's what you do when you have an online entertainment company. Um, <laughs> when that's how you make money, you don't stop. <laughs> um, anything you want to plug, Clarus? No, that's everything. You can catch our Twitch streams. Um, we're all over the internet. Um, so, yeah, come find us. And as always, my name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. Do something nerdy tonight. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>